Good morning. It's great to see you again on this Monday morning. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Eliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Central Illinois. I'm the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries. This is an outreach for those who don't have a church connection but want to tend to their spiritual health and faith life. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, which, by the way, this Wednesday, when the podcast episodes come out every Wednesday, and this Wednesday, there's a story of an amazing man, and you're not going to believe all that he has been through and what he is doing now for others so they can have the support they need is truly remarkable. If you want a little sneak peek of what it's about, go to whiteflagapp.com or download the app White Flag. But more about that on Wednesday. Today is Monday. Today, I would like to talk to you about being the love that you want to see in this world. If you follow me on social media, on Instagram, TikTok, or here on Facebook, my focus this week is going to be on being the love that you want to see in this world. Our world is a lot of things right now, and we have a lot of polarization, a lot of angst, a lot of anger, a lot of stuff going on. And people are putting sometimes not quite their best selves out there in the world. And we don't always have to be our best. A lot of times we just can't be our best and that's okay. But we can be kind. And that's really what I wanna focus on today is kindness. Kindness is something that we can share. Kindness is a powerful thing. I want to start with a simple definition. A definition of kindness is a quality of being friendly, generous, considerate. And I hope that you are familiar with such things. I hope you have been shown many acts of kindness in your life. And I hope that you're one who enjoys showing acts of kindness. Now, I want to make a quick distinction because I want to talk about what kindness is not. Sometimes we share with others and do good things for other folks, and that's always nice, but sometimes we do it out of our need for external validation. And that's something a little different. We've all been people pleasers at one point in our lives or another, but I wanna talk specifically about kindness. And we've got a working definition, a Webster definition of that quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. When we look at sacred texts, if you look in the Christian texts of the Bible, you would come across the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians. And what the fruits of the Spirit are, they're evidence of a life that is connected with Spirit, that is connected with Holy. So if you see, um, if you are a person who wants to connect with Holy and you live your life among those things, these are traits that you should be noticeable in your life. You know, I was a biologist and I'm not good with taxonomy. I was never good at plant taxonomy. I love trees, but I don't always know one tree from another. But I can always spot an apple tree. You know why? Because of the fruit they bear. I can always spot a cherry tree. You know how? Exactly, because of the fruit they bear. You can also spot spiritually healthy people by the fruit that they bear. And listed among that fruit is kindness. Kindness is evidence of spiritual health and intention. Kindness is also evidence of intelligence. I was looking into kindness and doing some Google searches about it. And a lot of people affirm that kindness is the highest form of intelligence. And I came across this definition of kindness. It's not mine, it's one that I came across. And that is kindness is sharing your strength and not highlighting another's weakness. Think about that for a minute. Sharing your strength. So you have something either innately in your abilities or by your position, something, and you share it, 
not in a way that highlights another person's weakness, but in a way that shares your strength. I love that definition of kindness. That is a great definition. And I'm going to be doing a little deeper dive into that for my own edification. So when have you had an opportunity to share your strength without highlighting another weakness, another's weakness? I saw someone share a, a story about that in a video, and he was a gym goer, 5 a.m. gym goer, and he loves his tribe that gets up early and shares that triumph of getting to the gym that early. And he noticed one time that there was a woman came come in that had not that was obviously at the beginning of her physical health journey and her, early on in her gym membership, maybe had, it might have been even her first visit to the gym. Anyway, there's a guy on the bench press that's just knocking it out. I mean, he's been a veteran of the gym for a long time. He sees this lady, the guy doing the bench presses that's just, you know, and he waves her over, just furtively waving her over. And he's like, I need help. Can you spot me, please? So she gets, you know, behind the bar and he's doing his bench presses and he's struggling and he asks for help and she immediately helps him get that bar back on the rack. And he jumps up and he gives her a high five and he's like, yeah, thanks for that help. And then he asks, hey, are you new here? You know, and she says, yeah. And he points out where a few amenities are and they go on their way. Now, what he did, he didn't flaunt his strength, nor did he flaunt her weakness. What he did in that situation was shared his strength without highlighting her weakness. In fact, he gave her a victory. He offered her an opportunity to help, which she did, and in doing so, she had a win herself. That's a great first experience and a first impression in a new place. That's something you can build on. So if you see someone in an environment where you're a veteran of that environment and someone is new and they look a little anxious or something, think of a way that you can help them have a win. One way to show a kindness. Another way to show kindness is encouragement. And, you know, be, even when you just say, hey, you can do it, you can do it, that's fantastic. We need to hear those messages. Can't get enough of those messages. But when you can be very specific about what you notice or appreciate in a person and share that with them, wow, that is something they will keep with them the rest of their lives. I guarantee you, if you take the time and the effort to share something meaningful that has impacted you about another person in a positive way and share that with them, that will carry them through some dark times. So be an encourager. Also, I wanna share with you a website I found, and this is so cool, I love this. It's kindness.org. Simple enough, right? kindness.org. And just a quick scroll through their website, they are focused on creating and cultivating kindness in a lot of different ways. They have programs for kids where they teach kindness to kids so that our next generation will have this ability and this skill and this intelligence within themselves. They also reach out to corporations how fantastic would it be to work for a corporation who had kindness as one of their core values and implemented it throughout their system? That would be cool, wouldn't it? And then they also work on a lot of collaborations to have kindness be present throughout systems and structures in our society. So go check out that website, kindness.org. It's really cool, the things that they're working on. So my hope for you this week is that you'll be able to share kindness from a place of your strength that does not cast light on another's weakness. When we can put more of that into this world, then that's when things get really fun. Think of the conversations that we can have in our communities when kindness is common. When, if, when we quit acting 
out of a need to highlight the other's weaknesses when we can share from strength so that others too can find strength within themselves. A lot of good can come from that. So that's my hope for you this week. And again, if you follow me on social media, this will be kind of the core message that I'm sharing this week. So I hope that it speaks to you and I hope it encourages you. And if you want to know how I particularly appreciate you, send me a direct message and just put a hands up or a thumbs up emoji in a direct message to me. And I would love to share with you what I really genuinely appreciate about you. You can also put it in the comments, but send me something. Give me a thumbs up this week in the comments or in a direct message and give me an opportunity to share encouragement with you about what I truly appreciate. So that's my message this week. I hope that this week finds you well and inspired and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.